Using foam and fiberglass with epoxy is a great way to make strong yet very lightweight parts. In this video, we're going to use our TC1604 epoxy laminating system to turn this carved foam minibus into a usable go-kart shell. Get ready as BJB continues to take the mystery out of materials. I wanted to build a custom fiberglass shell for a go-kart frame I had, so I decided on the iconic Volkswagen Microbus and got to work. I first measured and drew up some plans, scaled to fit the frame, and began to cut out 2 inch thick EPS foam from Home Improvement Store. I bonded the pieces together with 5 minute epoxy, and then began the messy process of sanding and carving the foam. It didn't take very long before the foam started to take shape. I added a few extra body line details with higher density signboard foam, and also worked on 3D printing many of the lights and emblems needed to create a convincing microbus. In the grand scheme of things, I couldn't do a perfectly scale body due to the frame's dimensions, but I wanted the key elements to pay tribute to an unmistakable classic while keeping it fun. Once the foam shell was ready for fiberglass, I gathered all the supplies needed for the project. Before working with any laminating epoxy system, it's important to use the proper safety equipment for personal protection. Nitrile gloves, protective clothing, safety glasses, and a cartridge respirator are essential for working safely with epoxy and fiberglass. I like these disposable sleeves that keep the epoxy off my arms as I reach around a large laminating surface. I can wear comfortable clothes and still protect my skin. We begin the process by measuring and cutting out all the fiberglass cloth needed to cover the foam. Before all of this, I ran some tests to see how many layers of cloth I would need to make the surface strong enough. We'll use two layers of six ounce plain weave fiberglass with some overlap in strategic areas. I measured everything and made a cut list of the assorted fiberglass pieces I would need. It's much more efficient to pre-cut the fabric needed than to cut it during a layup process. Once the fabric is all cut, I will first apply strips of fiberglass in key areas using a technique involving spray glue. This allows me to place the material in an unrushed, controlled manner especially in some of the more difficult spots like curved and underside areas. I will also note that I cut some of these strips at a 45 degree bias to allow them to drape and form better over the compound surfaces and the wheel wells and corners of the roof cutout. Applying the fiberglass with the spray glue is clean and easy to manage. The thin pieces stay in place better and trimming is easy and accurate. When I mix up the TC1604 epoxy for wet out, I don't have to wrestle with fabric that wants to slide around and try to wrinkle up on me in these difficult areas. Now that the thin strips of fiberglass are in place, it's time to mix up batches of the TC1604 epoxy laminating resin. TC1604 is a medium viscosity laminating epoxy designed for wetting out heavier fabrics. This allows you to create thick laminates quickly without excess draining. 1604 has been used over the decades in the aerospace and foundry industry for making dimensionally stable, heat-resistant composite tools, drill and trim fixtures. But it also works great for general purpose layups, support jackets for silicone glove molds, marine applications, wood lamination, and even coating 3D printed parts as a sanding sealer. It features a 20 minute working time and an economically attractive price. I mix up approximately two to 300 gram batches to get myself the right amount of material to work with. In wetting out detail areas, I don't want to run out of working time with too much epoxy in the mixing cup. Remember, with any two-part epoxy, the more material in the cup, the quicker the material heats up due to self-generated exotherm. So smaller batches end up being more efficient in the end. Okay, we're at a stopping point here and we've made some pretty good progress with doing the detail areas with the fiberglass and the 1604 epoxy resin. So before we get going on these larger, flatter areas as far as doing a laminate of the fiberglass, we've got to address these sharp corners, these details here. We're going to have to do something because if we try to just put fiberglass up and over that, the fiberglass is going to want to spring up, it's not going to want to lay down. So the trick typically is to use some sort of like a filled epoxy 
to make a, a fillet type material. Now normally I would just take the 1604 and I would mix in a little bit of cabosil and a little bit of micro balloon to make a, a fluffy, sticky, thick, non-drooping um, kind of an adhesive. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's going to take me a little time to get around here and the, and the working time of the 1604 is a little bit quick. So I'm going to use actually a product that we have, which is our TC4207. This is an epoxy adhesive, but it's a very thick paste. It uh, works fantastic for bonding wood to metal. And generally speaking, it just works good in uh, multiple composite applications. So this is a one-to-one -one mix adhesive. It gives us about an hour working time. So that should give us enough time to apply a fillet around all these areas and get all the way around and not have the material kicking off. That way, when we go to put the laminated epoxy on top of it, we'll still get a really good bond. So we're gonna mix some of this up, we're gonna apply it around these edges, and then after that, we can start beginning to uh, do our lamination. I'm applying the TC4207 epoxy paste anywhere I have sharp corners using a simple tongue depressor. I apply material quickly and eventually come back with a squeegee to clean up the excess material. The long working time of 4207 allows me to take my time improving the shape of the fillet. Okay, we've got our fillet material on. It's still in a nice tacky state, so at this point we're gonna take our uh, fiberglass, the larger pieces, we're gonna do the sides and the roof. We'll get two layers of that on there with our 1604 laminating resin, so let's get going. I brush 1604 epoxy on the foam before applying the fabric. This gives me a tacky surface to position and hold the large pieces in place. I squeegee and brush more epoxy on the fabric to continue wetting things out and eventually add the second layers of fiberglass. My technique is to quickly distribute epoxy onto the surface and move to other areas, allowing it to wet out the glass on its own as much as possible. I come back and rework the areas and address any dry areas to ensure a complete wet out. You need to work quickly and don't want to oversaturate the cloth or you end up using more epoxy and simply add unnecessary weight. Okay, so we've allowed the epoxy to cure overnight. Everything is uh, firmed up, it feels really good. It feels nice and strong. And overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. So the job now is basically we've got to go around, we've got to trim off all the excess fiberglass and we're gonna to have to sand any of the sharp edges as well as any of the areas that need to be smoothed out. So we're gonna go over this, do a nice smoothing of everything and sanding, and then after that, we're gonna basically be prepping this for applying a couple coats of just the raw epoxy itself. We wanna smooth out any of this weave pattern that we have here and get it closer to a point where we could start to paint it. So we're gonna to get to it, start smoothing it, sanding it, trimming it, and uh, get it ready for the next step. Anytime you're sanding fiberglass, you want to make sure your skin and lungs are protected from the dust. I wear a comfortable filtered respirator and suitable clothing and gloves. I'll even use tape at the cuffs to prevent any dust from getting under my sleeves. Where possible, I try to minimize dust by using wet sanding. Then I can clean up with rags and towels. Okay, so we've got our mini bus shell sanded down. We've smoothed off a lot of the rough edges all the places where fiberglass was overlapping. We've gone over with an orbital sander and we've got things looking pretty good. But we've got to come in and we've got to mix up a batch of our 1604 epoxy resin. And we're gonna do basically like a flood coat. We're gonna smooth over a lot of this texture that's left over from the fiberglass. I intentionally left it a little bit dry so that we'd have a good surface to uh, bond to, get it to get, let that epoxy have something to bite into. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna mix up a decent batch We've got to be kind of quick about this because 1604 does have a quick working time. So what we'll have to do is we're going to have to kind of commit to laying down a fairly thick layer of that epoxy. We want to, want to smooth it out and uh, give us something that we might have to come back and do a little bit of sanding in preparation for primer and then eventually painting. So we're going to mix up some 1604 and get going here. I'm laying down a thick enough coating of 1604 to achieve some self-leveling of the epoxy coating. 
I do one side at a time horizontally to take advantage of gravity and avoid runs and drips. I use masking tape in some areas to create a clean transition line and I pop surface bubbles with a high powered heat gun to minimize pinholes. Once the epoxy is cured, we begin the sanding process to smooth out the surfaces. The TC1604 coating has created a nice foundation to work from and it sands beautifully. Using our SCM High Build Spray Primer, we begin to cover the sanded surfaces. SCM Primer does a great job filling in minor sanding scratches and it dries really fast, making tedious body work a little less stressful due to its performance and ease of use. After a few coats of primer with sanding in between, we begin to find and fill the cosmetic issues. Some more of the major imperfections and defects can be addressed with two-part body filler. Glazing putty works great for pinholes and small scratches. Body work is one of those things that pays off with patience and sweat equity. SEM primer is used once again for sealing the surfaces and prep for paint. All right, well the mini bus is ready to paint. We've primered it, sanded it, smoothed it, and it's ready to go. We're gonna apply a two-tone paint job and uh, after that, a few more details, and this thing will be looking really good. So let's get to going to putting on the paint. I'm using a gloss white color for the top half of our bus. I apply several medium coats to build up an even color, allowing time to dry between coats. Once the white paint has sufficiently dried, I mask off where my second color will stop. I cover the white areas with masking paper to prevent overspray. The second color for the lower half of the bus is gloss cherry red. Once again, several medium coats are sprayed to build up an even color. The masking tape is pulled off to reveal the clean two-tone line. Custom vinyl graphics are added for more color design and detail. The windows of the buses are also created using custom vinyl graphics. Using BJB's Quick Curing Armor Bond Rigid Adhesive, we attach the vent louvers to the side of the bus. Before we can make this bus drive, we need to engineer the attachment points for mounting the shell to the body. Once again, we use BJB's TC4207 Epoxy Adhesive Paste to create a strong bond between wood and fiberglass materials. The 4207 does a great job of filling gaps on uneven surfaces to ensure a complete bond line. We place the side pieces and hold with tape to avoid sagging under its own weight. Our 3D printed lights and emblem details are also attached using BJB's Armor Bond Fast Curing Polyurethane Adhesive. And now the microbus is ready to roll.
You can find links to the BJB products used in making this bus below in the description. We have a wide variety of epoxy laminating systems, surface coats, and adhesives, along with many mold making silicones and castle polyurethanes on our website. BJB provides excellent technical assistance in helping you find the right product for your application. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media to learn more about mold making and casting. BJB, continue to take the mystery out of materials.